Hi guys, welcome to yet another episode of Microsoft ERP Beginners Tutorial Series. In today's episode, we are going to get started with the inventory adjustment journals that are available within the inventory management module in Microsoft Dynamic 365. So let's get started into the episode. Hi guys, welcome back again. And in this episode, we are going to look into the topic of inventory adjustment journals in Microsoft Dynamic 365. So in order to uh, get into the inventory adjustment journal, go to the inventory management module and you will see the inventory adjustment journal over here under the journal entry section. In the past episode, we have already covered in detail. In fact, in the past two episodes, we have covered uh, the movement journals um, in, a, in a very detailed way. So the movement journal are meant to do some inventory adjustments within the warehouse. Likewise, even the inventory adjustment journal do the same thing. That is, they are also meant to adjust the inventory stock within a specific warehouse. So this is the second way of adjusting the inventory within a specific warehouse. So let's maybe start this episode by with a, with a question, which is under what circumstances I should be using a movement journal and when I should be using a movement uh, inventory adjustment journal. So to answer to that question, so the inventory adjustment journals are normally used in a scenario when your warehouse worker uh, gets into the warehouse location and he tries to search for the warehouse location everywhere for a specific item and he really do not find the item anywhere in the shelf. So what he does is he looks for the neighboring racks but still he really do not find it. So he gets to his uh, manager that is a warehouse manager and reports to the warehouse manager about the missing stock. So the manager then tries to check into the system and tries to see and he really do not understand the reason for the discrepancy and reason for those missing stocks. So he even gets into the on-site location and tries to do conduct an investigation, but he still do not find the reason for the discrepancies. Since the reason for the discrepancy is not known at this stage, the manager decides to get into the system, key in an inventory adjustment journal, and adjust the inventory stock within Microsoft Dynamics 365 to reflect to the reality. So in short, the inventory adjustment journals are used within Microsoft Dynamic 365 whenever the root cause of the discrepancy within the inventory location is not known. That is, whenever the root cause of discrepancy is unknown, we normally create an inventory adjustment journal to adjust your inventory stock to reflect the reality. So just in case, if the manager performs a thorough investigation, he figures out that the reason for the discrepancy is because he made a vendor return and few of the stocks, he conducted a quality inspection and he destroyed them because they were of a poor quality. In such cases, since in this situation, the warehouse manager knows the reason for discrepancy and he forgot to key them in, in the system, in such a scenario, the warehouse manager should Go get back to the system and perform a vendor return within the Microsoft Dynamic 365 to remove those stock out of the inventory or he may need to key in a quality order in the system and uh, scrap those quantity which have failed the quality check and remove them out of the inventory. In such situations, since he knows the root cause of the discrepancies, he should not be using the inventory adjustment journal just because it is easier for him to do the inventory adjustment journal to remove the system. Because if he simply keep using the inventory adjustment journal to, to balance the discrepancies just because the inventory adjustment journal is very, very easy to use, then down the line over a period of uh, after two months or three months it will be very difficult for us to uh, understand the reason for those adjustments so even you know using the predictive analytics or using uh, the data to analyze the inventory stock will also be become very very difficult because inventory adjustment transactions will not give you the reason for those adjustments right so these are the situations where you should be using the inventory adjustment especially when you do not know the reason for the discrepancy whereas in the case of a movement journal scenario you already discussed in the, some of our past episode 
I gave you a lot of examples. For example, the water bottle needs to be distributed to the employees. We know that the water bottle stock will be consumed by the employees at the rate of 100 per day. So over a period of time, that stock is meant to be reduced. So that is the real, that is the actual um, uh, example of a movement journal scenario where you can use a movement journal to consume the the stock of the water bottle to distribute to the employee or you know that you are going to remove two of your tractors from the inventory so they are displayed on a trade show so you really know the reason for removing out your tractors or vehicle out of the inventory to display it in a trade show here when you're using a movement journal for adjusting you know the root cause of your adjustment your root cause of moving in or moving out within a warehouse, you know the reason. So then you use the movement journal, whereas when you do not know the reason, then you use your inventory adjustment journal. There are other differences between the movement journal and inventory adjustment journal around uh, the offset account that I will take it separately later. But in a business point of view, these are the major differences and these are the major business scenarios where you should be using both of either one of the journals. Now going back to the system with the uh, continuing with our topic. So similar to that of your uh, movement journal, uh, the first step uh, before starting with your inventory adjustment journal, we first need to create your journal name. Okay, so because without the journal name, I cannot create your inventory adjustment. Like if I try to create, I really do not have a journal name. So the first step is I need to create a journal name. So let's get into the inventory adjustment, set up journal names, inventory. And these are the movement journals that we have already created in the system before. So let me now create an inventory adjustment journal. Inventory adjustment journal. So the key here is to change the journal type to movement to the inventory adjustment. So as soon as I change the journal type to inventory adjustment, you will see that the offset account is disabled. If I change back to movement, the offset account is enabled. So this is one of the major difference between the movement journal and the inventory adjustment journal. So the offset account, I cannot uh, uh, key in or default within every single line within a adjust inventory adjustment journal. So that's the first step, which is the journal name creation. So I'm done. So now let's go into the inventory adjustment journal again and create the journal and choose the journal names. So in this case, I manually selected the journal name, but there are also, uh, it's also possible for you to default the journal name. So in order to default the journal name, I need to get into the, in. Uh, that's right. Let me go to the another tab. Okay, so uh, let me get into the inventory management module. Still loading. Or I'll just use this tab. So I get into the inventory management module. Um, parameters, get into the journal tab and here you can default all the journal names. In this case, I have movement journal. So I'm going to use this one and for adjustment journal, I have only one. Likewise, the transfer journal, counting journal, bomb journal, we have not seen it. We will see, uh, we will, we will uh, tag them when we uh, get into the relevant topic. For now, we have only covered movement and inventory adjustment. So let me just save it and now go back to the inventory adjustment uh, journal and create the inventory adjustment journal. I'll see that the journal name is populated automatically because of my parameter, because it's defaulted from the inventory adjustment parameters. So now let me go and uh, tag a warehouse and say OK. So it's exactly identical to that of your movement journal, same steps. And now uh, again, same similar to your movement journal, you need to go and add your item. So I'm going to use alloy wheel. Let me add another item. And I'm going to use a uh, roof rack here. 
but in the case of movement journal sorry in the case of inventory adjustment journal you will not be able to see any offset account against the line here if you go into the movement journal you will be able to see the offset ac uh, account against the lines right but in a case of inventory adjustment you will not see the offset account here that's one major difference but i'll come back to that again apart from the offset account remaining things are all look almost similar to that of your um, movement journal so let's say in this case you know the roof rack i'm going to put a, a negative quantity because i'm going to remove them no maybe i'll put a positive quantity because i'm going to um, purchase it into the inventory which is uh, my receipt transaction and in a case of uh, alloy wheel i'm going to put a negative quantity because i'm going to remove them from the inventory and this will act similar to that of an issue transaction so in the case of uh, you know uh, bringing it into the inventory that is the receipt transaction it is necessary for us to uh, provide a, a cost price here so uh, you can uh, give a cost price maybe of 100 so to keep track of under what cost price item is coming into the inventory so it's definitely needed you have to key in the cost price whereas in a case of uh, removing uh, out of the inventory the cost price some cases will display here automatically if there is a cost price available under the manage cost section within the item master however whatever cost price displays here is only for the sake of display in the front end form whereas in the back end the cost price posting happens uh, which follows the the weighted average cost of that particular item right so i'm not going to do anything to the cost price in this particular line it will automatically take the cost price from my uh, weighted average uh, cost of that particular item so um, so these are quite similar to that of our movement journal that we have already discussed before so uh, yeah so after doing all this then the next step is to validate the inventory adjustment journal and then post the inventory adjustment journal so now the inventory adjustments are done so if you go now and check your inventory transaction even though the cost price here is zero if you get into the transactions and check you will see that the as i mentioned it is considered as a sold because it's an issue transaction similar to that of your uh, your uh, sales orders so it's moving out of your inventory so now it is you know sold um, so it's against the issue and the reference here is quite different from that of the movement journal here the reference will be the inventory adjustment because this particular transaction happened due to inventory adjustment journal and of course the cost price here as you can see even though we haven't keyed in a cost price at the line level with an inventory adjustment the system is considering minus 191.70 which is the average uh, moving average cost of the item so it's been considered as the cost price that needs to be detected out of the inventory so now if you check the uh, ledger you can also see the whole transactions of both the lines so in this case in the in the one of the line the second line i think uh, it's getting debited to your inventory account this inventory account is fetched from your item master itself and it is uh, getting credited to your um, uh, expense account meaning this is uh, registered as a loss to the system uh, because uh, we are removing out uh, from the inventory whereas in this case the inventory is getting debited that is hundred dollars is getting uh, debited into the inventory and then that the same amount here is actually getting registered into your expense account as a profit because it is in this case credited to that of into the expense account so almost similar to the transactions are almost similar to that of your movement journal but the only difference here is the offset account is not fetched from the line level within the inventory adjustment because we do not define any offset account within the inventory adjustment line the inventory offset account here is fetched from the uh, from your uh, inventory management posting profile so if you go into the inventory management and under the setup under the posting if you get into the posting section under the inventory tab so inventory expenditure loss or inventory expenditure profit 
the respective accounts are tagged as a loss and the profit account. So whenever there is a loss, then it gets posted to this account. Whenever there's a profit, it gets posted to this account. Okay, so it's a uh, uh, it's a fixed account uh, keyed in within the posting profile itself. So there is a compromise in the flexibility in the case of inventory adjustment journal because in the case of a movement journal example, if you get into one of the movement journal transaction, you will see that the profit and loss will be posted to the uh, relevant offset account in the line level so it is possible for you to vary keep varying the offset account against each of the line because i can manually choose the offset account but in a case of uh, inventory adjustment journal even if i have 100 lines over here it's not possible for me to vary the offset account they all get posted to the offset account that is hard coded over here in this two particular these two sections okay so that is the major difference in flexibility between the movement journal and the inventory adjustment journal. And if you would have noticed in the transaction level, this was a cost price used to bring the roof rack within the inventory. And in this case, even though I haven't mentioned a cost price, the, the average cost was used within the inventory transaction I just showed you um, uh, to remove it out of the inventory. So that's the basic of the inventory adjustment journal. So let me also uh, give you one last bonus tip as a part of the inventory adjustment journal. So in the case of the inventory adjustment journal, um, let me quickly go and create one more journal. Uh, choose the warehouse. Okay. There's also need to be mindful of the posting date over here because whatever posting date that you will be uh, giving here or keying in here will be considered as your inventory transaction date as well. It's also possible for you to do some inventory adjustment for the past date. For example, let's say that I'm going to do an adjustment for this particular item on 27th of uh, March, which is today, I'm going to do adjustment of one quantity. Likewise, I also wanted to make an adjustment of the same item on the 1st of March for some of my past date uh, for the same item. It's uh, okay. Uh, okay, let me save it and post the inventory adjustment journal and if I do so and I get into the item master and show you the inventory transactions under the transactions if you check you will see that there is one inventory adjustment which is purchase uh, purchased that is we are um, increasing the quantity so it's posted as purchased one quantity and if I backdate and I'll see that this is on the 1st of March even though I posted it today but it's been posted uh, on the physical date of 1st of March so the posting date is also plays a key role and it's very important that you choose it accordingly according to the date that you really want to post your inventory adjustment journal hope um, that's a very short episode on the inventory adjustment journal i hope um, you got some idea about the inventory adjustment journal and difference between the movement journal and inventory adjustment journal so that's it for today and see you again in another video where we'll discuss about some more concepts of inventory adjustment journal and then we'll get started with another other journals like um, uh, transfer journals and uh, counting journals etc so stay tuned, keep watching and thanks for watching this episode again.